Hi, I'm Susan Casebolt. I teach developmental preschool at Pioneer Elementary School. Today I want children to explore, play with water, and this is going to help them um, understand the world around them. Today I want to explore this beach. I've never been here before. As we get down to the water, we start to notice all these rocks. Look at this rock here. It's got a snail on the top of it. I wonder what's underneath there. Whoa, look at all those crabs. Whoa, that guy's big. Why, it's like they're trying to get back underneath the rock. Huh, oh, look at those crabs, look at them. They're holding their hands up. Why are they doing that? That rock's sunk, but the log's floating. Let's try another rock. Why does the rock sink? Huh, the log floats. Maybe it's because the rocks are heavy. But the boats are heavy too. Why do they float? But the rocks sink. Yesterday when we were at the yeah. beach, I noticed how rocks sank, wood floated, and I thought rocks sank because they're heavy. But then when I saw the boats and I saw that they floated, that made me wonder, they're heavy too. So what other things do we have that sink and what other things float? So I thought, you know, you guys play in the bathtub, you guys got mud puddles you can play in, buckets outside, maybe you help your mom and dad wash dishes. I thought exploring what sinks and what floats would be a good thing for you guys to play with and figure out. But before we start, we've got some safety things. I've got a list of things that are no. Before you gather up and try to decide and put things in water, whether it sinks or floats, I say no to anything that has a cord on it, or if it's something that you turn on or has a battery in it, that's also a no. Like this, this turns on my car. If I put this in the water, my car would no longer turn on. This remote, that also turns on my TV. If I put this in the water, my TV wouldn't turn on. So before you start throwing things in the water, check with your mom or your dad if it's okay. And the other time, anytime you're playing around water, you want to make sure that your mom and your dad know that you're near water so that they can make sure that you're being safe. All right, so I thought we would try throwing in things I found around the house. I found this little blue rubber shark. All right, what do you guys think? Do you think it's gonna float? Or do you think it's gonna sink? I play with this in the water. I know that it's going to float. It's like a rubber ducky. So let's see if I'm right. Yes, it does float. And you don't need to do this, but if you wanted to make this a science and a math activity, you could collect your data. So like I said it was going to float, and it floated. I'm just marking it here so that I can make my predictions and my results. But you don't need to do that. Just play around. Have fun. All right, so rubber shark floats. What about an orange? Do you guys know? Is it going to float? Or it's going to sink. I'm going to say it's going to sink. And the reason I think that is it's round like those rocks and it's kind of heavy. So let's see. Whoa! Whoa, it floated. Okay. So the orange was round like a rock and heavy, but it floated. What about the little orange? Since the big orange floated, I'm going to guess the little orange is going to float. Do you think all oranges float? Let's see. It does. So I was right. All right. This isn't an orange. It's green. It's a lime. Its skin is very similar to the orange. It's kind of round. I'm going to say the lime is going to float. Barely. It's close to the bottom. Let's see. Is it going to come up? 
wow, that line, it sank. How are we drawing on that one? Huh. I wonder why the line sank, but the orange floated. Okay, apples. They say you're not supposed to compare apples to oranges, but I'm going to say the apple floats. And you know what? When I think about it, I've got a connection. Over 40 years ago, I played a game called bobbing for apples. It's where we had a bowl full of apples that were all floating and we had to try to grab the apple with our teeth. So I know without trying, because I can remember that apples float. Look at that. That was right. All right. So now I want to know about a strawberry. Is a strawberry going to float? I'm going to say yes. Yes, the strawberry floats. And a banana. I ate the other half at breakfast. Let's see. Is the banana, half a banana, going to float? Yes. Oh, I forgot to make a prediction. Now I wonder, will a whole banana float? All right, so let's see about tennis ball. Tennis ball is round like the apples and the oranges. The line was round too, but the line didn't float. This is pretty light. I'm going to say it's going to float. It did. All right, now let's look at the golf ball. Do you think all balls float? I'm going to say yes, it's going to float. Oop, that one sunk. All right. How about a marker? A marker we use it to write with. Oop, it floats. All right, what about my pen? I use pens to write with. I'm going to say it floats too. Oop, it did. How about my pencil? Is it going to float? Is everything that we use to write with float? It does. Okay, now I wonder, can you guys find something that you use to write with that doesn't float? Can you find something that sinks that you would use to write? What about a crayon? I don't have a crayon. That's something for you guys to discover and let me know. All right, I have a fork. What do you do with a fork? You eat with a fork. So, boats floated. Boats are made of metal. The fork is made of metal. I wonder if it's going to float. Oh, that sinks. Okay, so the spoon is metal. The fork is metal. You eat with them. I'm going to guess this floats, or this sinks. I think this is going to sink. Let's see. Oh, yeah. You know what? When I wash dishes, I'm always having to go way down to the bottom of the sink in order to get the silverware to wash it. I should have made that connection to make this prediction. I figured I should have figured that out just from washing the dishes every night. Yes. So now I wonder, do all knives and forks sink? What do you think? I have a plastic fork. What do you guys think? Do you think it's going to sink like the metal fork or is it going to float? Let's see. I think it's going to float. It's a lot lighter. Let's see. It did. So maybe it has to do with how heavy something is, huh? All right. So yesterday when we were at the beach, all of the rocks sank. All right. I'm curious. Do you think all rocks sink. Let's see, I got some rocks here. Oh, I got this big, round, heavy rock. Let's see. That sinks. There's another one. Oh, yeah, that one sinks. How about this one? Whoa, that sinks. That sinks. But this little one. That one, even though it's small, it's still saying, oh wow, this is the biggest rock I have. Let's see, let's take this out. Let's see, is this going to sink? Whoa, that was unexpected. So, we just learned not all rocks sink. 
even though this one is bigger. You know what? When I feel them, this one's pretty light. I wonder why this one floats. Good. So while you're playing around safely with water, I thought I would just show you another fun thing that you can do. Just take a little piece of foil. Your parents probably have it in the kitchen. And I thought you could be an engineer. This is a STEM activity. You're doing science and engineering. And see if you could make a boat that floats. Okay. And then, if we wanted to add a little math, we could start counting to see how many pennies your boat can hold. that's fun to do when you're playing with water is to watch the level of the water. See, I put this rubber band here. This is how high the water is. What happens when you put objects in there? It's the same. That's still the same. What about when I put this bigger rock in there? I wonder if it's going to get up higher. Ooh, you might not be able to see it, but I can see it's just above the rubber band. I put this big rock in. What do you guys think is going to happen? Do you think the water is going to come up? Whoa, all the way to the top. That's Archimedes' principle. And you're going to learn that formula about how volume um, displaces water when you're in physics in high school. But right now, just play around with objects. See, when you put different size objects in water, how does that change the level of the water? And if you get a chance, look at the story about the crow and the pitcher. A pitcher is something that you use to store water in and pour. It's an Aesop's fable about how a crow, using what he knew, um, was able to think and solve a problem. So by practicing with rocks and water, or objects and water, you're going to be able to solve some future problems too. Uh, we had fun playing with water. I'll be curious to find out do crayons sink or do they float? And how many pennies did your boat hold? Bye!